Hey kids, welcome to fun learning. Whoa, we are back again with another interesting topic. Literal and figurative language. In this video you will learn types of languages. Literal language. Figurative language. Difference between literal and figurative language. Types of figurative language. Uses of figurative language. Practice. In last, we will review. Painting is literature in colors. Literature is painting in language. By Pramodya Ananta Tua. We're going to look at two types of literature language. There are two types of languages author and poet use in literature. Literal language. Figurative language. Let's start with literal. To be literal is to state what you mean or mean what you say. For example, if I tell you to stop whining, I mean it literally, stop whining. As in, stop whining and put a smile on your face, please. I am directly stating what I mean. Here's another example. I'm tired and going home. This means, I'm tired and I'm going home. There is no other meaning other than what is said. I mean exactly what I stated. What is figurative language? Whenever you describe something by comparing it with something else, you are using figurative language. To be figurative is to not mean what you say but to imply something else. For example, if I tell you, let's go chill, means let's relax together and do something fun. It has nothing to do with temperature. The opposite of literal language is figurative language. Figurative language is language that means more than what it says on the surface. It usually gives us a feeling about its subject. A writer's tool. It helps the reader to visualize, see, what the writer is thinking. Literal versus figurative. Confused? Think of it this way. Literal is stated directly. Figurative is imaginary. How do I differentiate between literal and figurative language? To understand what figurative language is, one needs to understand the difference between literal and figurative. Literal language. Figurative language. In literal, you say exactly what you mean. In figurative, you don't say exactly what you mean. In literal, you make no comparison, and you do not exaggerate or understate the situation. In figurative, you make no comparison, and you do not exaggerate or understate the situation. Literal is real. Figurative is imaginary. Why use figurative language? Also known as descriptive language, or poetic language, figurative language helps the writer paint a picture in the reader's mind. Figurative language makes reading more interesting. As you are clear with literal and figurative language let's discuss the types of figurative language. These types are also known as figurative devices. First is similes. Metaphor. Personification. Alliteration. Assonance. Consonance. Repetition. Onomatopoeia. Oxymoron. Hyperbole. Imagery. Idiom. Let's start with the very first device of figurative. Similes. A simile is a figurative language technique where a comparison is made using like or as. Example of similes. She dances like a graceful swan. It's a comparison of two things. Example her eyes were like stars. Susan is as gentle as a kitten. More example are. I am hungry as a horse. As is simile. 
You run like a rabbit. Here like is simile. She is as happy as clam. Here is is simile. Second device is metaphor. Metaphor is comparing two unlike things without using like or as. Examples of metaphors. Calling one thing, another. Calling one thing, another. He's a lion when he fights. Her eyes were sparkling emeralds. Third device is personification. Personification is a figurative language technique in which human characteristics are given to non-human things. Example of personification. The heat ripped the breath from his lungs. In this sentence, heat is the thing that is performing the human characteristic, ripped. Does heat really rip? No. It means, of course, that the heat made it difficult for him to breathe. The leaves danced in the wind. Do leaves really dance? Of course not. Close your eyes and picture leaves dancing in the wind. What do you see? Why do you think an author would choose to use dancing to show what the leaves were doing? Think. Personification gives human characteristics to things that are not human. The angry flood waters slapped the house. The sun smiled down on us. Fourth is alliteration. Alliteration is the repeating the same initial consonant sound in neighboring words. Examples of alliteration. Sally sells seashells by the seashore rolling, racing, roaring, rapids. Here in alliteration S and R. The first consonant sound is in repetition. Some more examples of alliteration. Alliteration includes the tongue twisters. Miss Warren was worried when Wendy was waiting. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Alliteration in poetry. A flea and a fly in a flu were imprisoned, so what could they do? said the fly let us flee let us fly said the flea so they flew through a floor in the flu assonance assonance is the repetition of internal vowel sounds that doesn't have to rhyme the repetition of similar vowel sounds takes place in two or more words in proximity to each other within a line of poetry or prose this allows writers the means of emphasizing important words in a phrase or line, as well as creating a sense of rhythm, enhancing mood, and offering a lyrical effect of words and sounds. For example, he fell asleep under the cherry tree, is a phrase that features assonance with the repetition of the long e vowel, despite the fact that the words containing this vowel do not end in perfect rhymes. The pain may drain Drake, but maybe the weight is fake. Essay phrase that features assonance with the repetition of the longer vowel, despite the fact that the words containing this vowel do not end in perfect. Consonants. When consonants repeat in the middle or end of words. Examples. Mammals named Sam are clammy. Here double M repeat in the middle. Curse. Bless me now. With fierce tears I pray. Here s the consonant is repeating in the middle. Repetition. Repeating a word or words for effect. Example. Nobody. No. Nobody. Can make it out here alone. Alone. All alone. Nobody. But nobody. Can make it out here alone. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia are the words that are sound. The use of a word to describe or imitate a natural sound made by an object or action. Words that sound like what they mean. Like. Pow. Hiss. Zoom. Tweet tweet. And buzz of a bee. Are some examples of onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is when a word's pronunciation imitates its sound. 
vroom, woof, boom, clink, beep. The firecracker made a loud car boom. The ball went swish as it hit the net. I knew the car was going to break down because it went chug chug chug. Oxymoron. Oxymoron pairing two words together that are opposing or contradictory. Oxymoron has the effect of creating an impression, enhancing a concept, and even entertaining the reader. Some examples of oxymoron. Baby grand. Jumbo shrimp. Climb down. Act naturally. Hyperbole. An exaggeration so dramatic, no one could believe it. Overstate to emphasize a point. This bag weighs a ton. I've told you a million times to clean up your room. Imagery. Evoke a sensory experience or create a picture with words for a reader. By utilizing effective descriptive language and figures of speech, writers appeal to a reader's senses of sight, taste, smell, touch, and sound, as well as internal emotion and feelings. Language that appeals to the senses. Descriptions of people or objects stated in terms of our senses. Idiom. An idiom is an expression that means something different than what the words actually say. An idiom or idiomatic expression refers to a construction of words or expression different from the ordinary meaning of the words. The context can help you understand what an idiom means. Example, she has a bee in her bonnet, meaning, she is obsessed, cannot be literally translated into another language word for word. Up the creek without a paddle, on top of the world, fingers crossed, shake a leg, or, break a leg, put a lid on it, it's raining cats and dogs. Idioms, like other types of figurative language, make reading more interesting. Remember what literal means. To mean what you say. An idiom is the opposite. An idiom is a figure of speech. It is figurative language. Imaginary. Remember, let's chill does not mean to walk into a freezer together. There are tons of idioms. I'm sure you use several all the time, without thinking about it. Illusion. An illusion is an irreference or mention of person, event, statement, piece of art, history, myths, religion, or popular culture. The reference is usually indirect within the writing. Dot dot dot. Therefore, an illusion is when a piece of writing tries to hint at a person, place, thing, literature, or art. People often make illusions in everyday conversation sometimes without the realization that they are doing so. Here are some common examples of illusion in everyday speech, along with the source material to which they reference. She felt like she had a golden ticket from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That guy is young, scrappy, and hungry from Hamilton. I wish I could just click my heels from the Wizard of Oz. If I'm not home by midnight, my car might turn into a pumpkin from Cinderella. Irony. When a speaker intends something entirely different than what is said. Say it one way, but, secretly, mean it the opposite way. Example someone accomplishes something hard or is very successful and you say, you've certainly made a mess of things. It smells really good in here when referring to something that smells terrible. Rhythm. When words are arranged in such a way that they make a pattern or beat. Example there once was a man from Peru, who dreamed of eating his shoe, he awoke with a fright, in the middle of the night, and found that his dream had come true. Shoe. True. Fright and night are rhythming. Hint hum the words instead of saying them. Here is an example of rhythm. In this poem, me, tree, house mouse, right, and fight are in rhythm.
It's practice time. Identify the type of figurative language in the following sentences. Remember the answer till the last statement. The hockey player lost his control when the puck ran across the ice. The snow on the ski hill was powdered sugar. The coach was as upset as a lion when his team lost the game. Freddie French fired five fabulous free throws. The snowmobile was a rocket in the newly fallen snow. The running shoes danced as the runner neared the finish line. Bang! Went the gun as the race started. Stephen boxes in the light heavyweight division. Spotlighting several special sports shows seems significant for TV. After the marathon, the runner was thirsty enough to drink the ocean. The snowmobile was a rocket in the newly fallen snow. The team members remained as cool as cucumbers after the game. Let's see the answers. Spotlighting several special sports shows seems significant for TV. The team members remained as cool as cucumbers after the game. What do all the sentences have in common? Besides containing figurative language. And the answer is sport. These all statements are related to sports. This is what we have learned today. Hope you have learned a lot today. Thanks for watching.